Hey everybody and welcome to this screencast on what we can call non-linear regression. So uh, there is a handout to accompany this. Uh, I omitted to get this to you in class today so I will have it available to you tomorrow um, and with any luck I will post it online and try to attach it to a remind message. So we're going to skip over example one. Example one is about uh, linear regression and uh, we can actually study linear regression in this context as well um, and that way we're doing more with one example okay so here's the problem um, we have a lab tech who is monitoring bacterial growth and scanning every hour estimating the number using a particular technique uh, that maybe you've done as well in terms of counting cells uh, under a microscope in biology class so we do not know the initial population size. Okay, and that's fine. We could probably figure that out uh, with an equation over the graph. But we're going to create a scatter plot. Now it says using the TI-83. So we are not going to use the TI-83. Um, that is an option. Um, it is rather uh, old technology, and there are many other tools we can use nowadays. Specifically, Excel is great because you are uh, conducting a lot of reports and uh, things like that on your own, and especially in MSIP and at home. It's such uh, a great tool to use for many different reasons. So with this question here, we need to perform regressions. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go through a particular key set of regressions and we'll start with uh, the linear regression. So I've got my data input, uh, x as the, uh, or time as the independent variable population of bacteria as y or the dependent variable. So I'm going to insert a scatter plot as you've done in the past. I'm not going to take too much time to format the titles and the labels because uh, that's really not the goal of the video. But I'm going to head into the chart space and add a trend line and make sure it's clicked on linear. We want to select, um, we're not going to force the y-intercept so we're going to let that be. We're going to display the equation as well as the r squared value on the chart. So I'm just going to close that for now and I'll look back to the graph. This is rather hard to see so I believe we should probably increase the font size on that. Something a bit more legible or readable. Perfect. Okay so we have an equation of a line so that would be the slope value so a slope of roughly 76 that would be 76 bacteria per hour and a y-intercept of negative 142.71. The r-squared value, of course, is decimal 8591. So that means roughly 86% of the variation in the population, so you can see that there's a lot of variation in the population, is going to be explained by the line of best fit. That's pretty good wouldn't you say, to have uh, an 86% um, accuracy for those points being explained by the line. Now, as you probably noted, uh, there is a, a nonlinear appearance to those data. So we need to explore some of those models and look at the appropriateness of their fit through the lens of R squared, as well as through the lens of uh, residuals. So what I would like to impress upon you at this point in time is the following. Some data sets, it might be difficult to identify if you should do a nonlinear regression. And what I mean by that is you might end up with a set of data uh, that are plotted in such a way that it does become difficult to see whether or not you should uh, move beyond the line of best fit. So without recognizable outliers um, without other points that you want to deal with you would have to go in and calculate the residuals so let me show you how that's done using excel and it's nothing more than using a formula we would have class and then applying that in the excel environment so let's take for instance uh, we have the population let's get the predicted population which would be from the line of best fit and then from that we'll calculate the residuals which is the distance or the deviation of the actual y value 
relative to the predicted value or relative to the line. So what we'll do is we'll take our equation from below. So we're going to take the value of the slope, so 75 decimal 643. We'll multiply that by the time in hours, which is the x, and we'll subtract the y-intercept, which is 142 decimal 71. And that gives us a value of negative 67. So in a context, negative 67 bacteria does not make sense, although according to the line of best fit, Right, which is the trend line, you can see it here. Okay, so we've got that formula calculating properly. Now, to quickly complete the remaining predictive values, we can click and drag. And if we scroll through, you can see how the value goes from A4 to A5 to A6, so it is utilizing the correct number of hours in the formula. So you can see the predictive values are climbing, and we can certainly read those from the graph. So the residuals, remember the residuals is the distance between any point, say for instance this one, and the line, okay, or this point and the line. Some will be positive residuals lying above the line, some will be negative lying below. So to get our residuals, what we need to do is to take the, uh, the predicted value, and we need to subtract the, the actual value. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see. Let me correct myself on that. So if I want to, if I expect a positive residual, for instance, this point here, I would have to take its actual value and subtract the predicted. So I take the population value and subtract the predicted value, I have a positive residual. Now that's not where I wanted that formula, but rather I wanted it here. So subtract this and this. That's what I wanted. Let's remove that. Uh, for instance, this one up here, the predicted value is negative. So the residual, take a look at the graph, should be negative. So in order to do that, we would need to do the following. So the residual should be positive. So we're going to take the actual value, so equals. The actual population value minus the predicted value 77.0767 and that makes sense as it is a positive residual okay. so the fill down feature on this works rather well so we'll click and drag and then we'll just check our graph so we have three negative residuals here for time x equals three to five and you can see those points here three, four, and five hours have negative residuals for population. So last but not least, oops, we have the residuals calculated. So what we'll do is we'll now create a scatter plot of the residuals and study those. So you can see here right away, uh, let me go back, I clicked on just simply scatter plot, and we have our graph of the residuals here. So let's study that for a moment. So you can see the value of the residual is relative to zero. And if we add all of the residuals together, or the values of those deviations, we would end up with zero. And we've experienced that somewhere else in our course when we were developing ideas around the mean and the standard deviation. So you can see in the plot of the residuals, we have a very characteristic shape. Okay? Now, typically, you do not see such patterning in a plot that has uh, a relatively ample amount of variation between the values. Okay? So what we're going to see with this plot is we're going to have to reject the linear model, and we're going to have to explore a nonlinear model, okay, as we have a few large residuals, and we also have some patterning within the residuals themselves that indicate uh, that there is some nonlinearity to uh, the data, the trend in the data. So despite the fact that there are no influential points, we don't have necessarily significant outliers, and we have a relatively high R squared, all of those are great things in terms of having that line of best fit. But because the residuals reveal this particular plot, we do have to reject the R squared value.
or sorry, not the R-squared value, but rather the entire model or the linear model. So what we'll do, let's split this into two different screencasts, so two short ones. This one is on residuals, and the next one uh, will be on specifically the non-linear regressions.